Uh, let's uh, get started. So this is my student Gagan, this tiny head there. Okay, that's him. Uh, so uh, his master thesis is under my guidance. Okay, and his master thesis focuses on the healthcare industry and how to use AI to make healthcare more affordable and accessible to a certain set of population in a given region. Okay, that was his focus. After after that, he started working in the environmental uh, management area. Uh, so his focus is more technical. Uh, he focuses on the algorithms, AI, AI algorithms, and machine learning algorithms. But in general, his uh, research is geared to the the the, the uh, environmental management. Okay. Uh, so let's welcome Gagan. Say hello, and uh, our students say hello. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I think Gagan, you can get started. Perfect. So I'll begin my talk. Uh, first of all. Thank you for joining with me today uh, to explore the intersection of uh, three parts. First is water resource management. Second is artificial intelligence. And then third is, of course, your area of interest, business. So we all know water is not only essential for life, but also for sustainable development of our communities and the preservation of environment. So I have divided my presentation in two main parts, namely research work introduction and follow-up. This breakdown ensures that we not only learn from today's discussion, but also try to build something out of it together. In the first part of my presentation, I'd like to take a moment to introduce myself. Um, then I will expand on it with a discussion on the major aspect of my research that is around the concept of water as a vital resource Lastly, I will explore the integration of artificial intelligence, AI, into the water resource pipeline. So since I come from an engineering-focused uh, school, uh, the second part follows up uh, with an international business context where we see the water resource problem from a business point of view. We also have a very exciting homework exercise for you. Uh, in this, uh, Dr. Harish and I, with your help, of course, try to solve some new water resource management problems. Uh, we will see if they can be addressed using AI or data-driven approaches. We will try to find the logic behind the problem and try to answer questions like, uh, which machine learning taxonomy can be used uh, or can be used to solve this problem. So it will be very similar to your course and it will be a homework for you. So guys, now I begin to introduce myself and my journey so far. Uh, uh, my name, yeah. One moment, let me just ask them if uh, you need to speak slower or something because they're uh, different students, right? From China and uh, from other countries, right? So, okay, does he need to speak slower? It's reasonable, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, my bad. I keep going, it's, it's okay. Yeah, uh, I'll try to speak slower if it's okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, my name is Kagan, uh, my name means sky in Hindi language. Uh, which is one of the official languages of India from which I originally belong. So it's okay if you call me Sky. I am currently working on an industry funded PhD program in information engineering. And previously I have two master's degree, one in computational physics, and the most recent one is in uh, informatics. So prior to joining full-time as a researcher here in Italy, I had some experience in research through several research internships uh, one in China and one in Sweden, and the one in China is where I met uh, Dr. Harish. So initially, I worked in interdisciplinary healthcare research, but more recently, with my new journey at Polytechnic University of Marke, I'm working in the use of technologies like artificial intelligence, computer vision, for the sustainable uh, use of uh, natural resources and their management. So I'm happy to share my learnings with you today uh, so far. Uh, first of all, I'll begin with my university, the Polytechnical University of Marke or Universita Polytechnical del Marche, often referred uh, as uh, UniVPM, is an Italian public university uh, located in Marche, Italy. It is known for its uh, uh, technical and scientific focus, and uh, they, they focus on disciplines like engineering, business, and medicine. Uh, UniVPM has an unofficial uh, history dating back to the 16th century, but, it, but in its present form, uh, it's operating since 1970s. The university main campus is located in Ancona, 
which is the capital city of Marque region. Um, but being a uni European university, it has another headquarter uh, in Brussels, which is the case with most uh, international universities in Europe. So I am officially a member of the VRI lab, uh, which is short for Vision, Robotics and Artificial Intelligence. Uh, our lab is a research group hosted in the Department of Information Engineering. And the group is involved in uh, several projects uh, and has researchers working and publishing um, in uh, different uh, fields. Uh, so this is the whole team of our VRI lab. And uh, I have highlighted my supervisors and uh, of course myself. Uh, which we are chiefly interested in working on uh, resource conservation using data-driven approaches. And uh, our lab is a partnership between two uh, universities of the market region, with uh, ours being the, um, the larger university and the University of Macharata being the smaller one. So this is the whole group. So now we move closer to my area of research and discuss a short background on the importance of uh, such a study. Uh, globally, uh, over 2.2 billion people lack access to safe drinking water, and uh, uh, by the year of 2040, nearly a quarter of the world's population is expected to reside in uh, regions uh, which have chronic shortages of water. So this highlights uh, the urgent need for sustainable water man management, and undoubtedly water management is crucial uh, to ensuring sustainable and reliable supply of clean drinking water. And uh, because the rise, because there is recently there has been a rise in sensors that can detect the levels of water, uh, let's say groundwater, and uh, can measure its purity in real time, the role of artificial intelligence has become uh, the center of attention globally to tackle this uh, shortages problem or uh, the problem with the uh, lack of its purity. So. Artificial intelligence basically analyzes these uh, data from the sensors and satellites and tries to predict water availability or its quality, optimizes distribution and detects uh, any emergency that we may face in the future. So using AI, we conserve water and ensure its uh, access and build resilient and sustainable uh, communities. So today we'll uh, explore AI's role in groundwater research. So our lab focuses on contamination and quality analysis and predicts future trends of groundwater level. So today's discussion will focus on forecasting methods. So just uh, to go step by step, I will begin with the, what is basically forecasting of groundwater. So groundwater, as you all know, comes from underground and uh, uh, groundwater forecasting means predicting how much water will be in the underground reservoirs in the near future. For example, if we know it's uh, been a dry year and uh, we use forecasting, then we can estimate uh, that there might be less groundwater available for drinking and farming next year. So this is the basic crux behind forecasting. So this helps us to plan accordingly. And in fact, we collaborate with the Department of Urban Management in Ancona and the municipality of our city that is Ancona who use our AI model and plan ahead to help the help distribute the population in a better way. So, but uh, it's not only about forecasting in the lab, our site, uh, site visits are also an essential part uh, of collecting groundwater data. So during these site visits, our team physically goes to where groundwater monitoring, monitoring is needed we inspect the site uh, to understand its geological characteristics. Uh, what are geological characteristics? Uh, we, these are uh, a type of soil and rock formations which can influence how water moves underground. And uh, additionally, uh, they identify suitable spots for drinking, uh, drilling wells or uh, installing sensors. So these visits also consider local factors like land use, uh, which can affect uh, groundwater quality due to potential contamination sources. For example, if there is a factory nearby. So all these uh, comes under site visits, but uh, you know, as I have introduced myself, you know now that I'm just an information engineer. So what do I, I know about groundwater conditions, factors and uh, so on? And yes, that's true. I don't know much about it. So we have to partner with the hydrologists or uh, people who know more about groundwater level and uh, what kind of ground uh, affects the quality of groundwater. So 
Here, this uh, picture shows uh, Dr. Franzi. Uh, he's my colleague here in the university, and he helps us to, uh, with his help, uh, we uh, we measure the use the equip use the equipment he installs to measure uh, to measure the groundwater and collect the data. Then this data is turned to valuable information by our team. So this is the basic uh, methodology we follow. So. To sum up, our basic pipeline uh, is very easy. This involves three major steps in which uh, first step is combining sensor data. This steps uh, includes on-ground measurements of uh, environmental factors like groundwater levels and quality of satellite images. In the second step, artificial intelligence is employed to analyze uh, these combined data for prediction and forecasting. And thirdly, these predictions uh, help make decisions related to conservation of water and land resources. The results are disseminated uh, widely, in, uh, which then influence policy or uh, help the city to plan ahead and uh, assist uh, small and medium enterprises, for example, uh, companies that are involved in packaging uh, drinking water to make them sustainable choices in the future. So yeah, with this uh, conclusion of our research direction, we have um, used this methodology and we have tried to publish uh, several uh, ongoing research works. And today we will see the result of one of these investigations in detail, uh, of course, which is the one I have highlighted. So this was published recently and I'll try to show you how we use artificial intelligence to predict uh, groundwater level. So, so now we have we know how the pipeline basically works, and uh, I'll just try to give you a small teaser here that we use a model that was originally developed by Facebook team. Uh, so Facebook used this model to um, to forecast how many people will be on social media at any given time, and uh, we used the similar approach developed by Facebook originally for social media, but we try to use this for forecasting groundwater level. So. This is an important learning for us that uh, even though machine learning models developed for a particular use case, we can then use the same model for different use cases just by fixing some parameters. So this is called transfer learning and uh, the original model was developed by Facebook and we use the same model for uh, uh, forecasting groundwater, which is so cool. So in groundwater research, there's a lot of data collected and it can be tricky to predict future trends because groundwater uh, behaves in a complex way. Uh, many people have suggested uh, using some popular techniques uh, such as ARIMA, LSTM and ANN. These are all different kinds of models, but uh, for us uh, among these profit will, is a good choice for modeling groundwater because uh, it can handle different patterns like seasonal changes and sudden events like earthquake. So we choose this because Ancona has several low intensity earthquakes. The central region of Italy uh, is prone to several earthquakes and we could include these details in the model's architecture. So things like earthquake can also be included. So we make a conscious choice of using uh, Facebook's uh, profit model. So now I'll dis discuss a little about uh, Profit. Uh, so Profit is a machine learning based forecasting model. Uh, there, is an, there is also an extension to Profit model, which is known as Neural Profit. Uh, this Neural Profit is a deep learning approach, which means it's a more complex, but a better approach. But uh, anyways, back to Profit, because so far it's a pilot study and we are only focusing on machine learning, artificial uh, intelligence approaches and not at all concerned with deep learning approaches. So uh, it is a time series model with the three main uh, ingredients, as you can see in the equation, which is trend, seasonality, and hot holidays. You don't have to think too much about the maths behind it. This math simply means that the model is designed to understand time series data. Uh, it do so by breaking it down into three main parts, the overall trend in our data, the re reoccurring patterns, for example, rainy season, summer season, these are reoccurring patterns. Over the years, these things tend to repeat themselves. For example, every year we have a summer season, every year we have a winter season, and then every year we have a, 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 a let's say spring. So these 
these things uh, also affect the collection in the groundwater. So uh, the profit, uh, it tries to understand from all these patterns in the groundwater level. So now we see step-by-step step what we did during our investigation and uh, to get the result and to groundwater forecasts. So the, the first step was data preparation. We start by gathering all the data related to groundwater level with the help of our colleague, Dr. Franzi. And then we move on to feature engineering. Then we create important uh, factors or features that help our model to understand data better, like rainfall or temperature. We not only use groundwater data, we also try to feed other information on the same day, for example, temperature or um, uh, rainfall on the day. So this helps our model to better understand the situation. Then we use in the data pre-processing step, we make sure that the data is organized correctly so our computer can um, uh, understand it effectively. To computer, everything is just uh, numbers and uh, binary. So computer doesn't think like us, uh, us that it's a uh, number nine or is bigger than number six. To computer, it's just uh, binary numbers. So we pre-process the data so that the uh, computer can also understand or extract some valuable information from the model. Then we move on to the model selection phase. Model selection in this, uh, we choose the best method like Facebook for profit or any other method that can predict water level accurately. For So we choose, uh, um, uh, basically choose profit uh, because of the reason I gave you already. It's about uh, all about earthquakes and all. So the next step will be model parameterization. We set the models setting to make it work well for our specific forecasting case. So for for uh, forecasting in, in, in Kona will not be same to forecasting, let's say at some other region in Italy. So we try to uh, parameterize the model and uh, to specific needs of Ancona. And then we move on to model training. Uh, here we use historical data to teach our model on how to make prediction about future. And then finally, we put our trained model into action to provide forecasts about uh, water levels and quality, helping us to manage the resource value. So just to, to make a note uh, that many of these steps can now be done conveniently using low-code tools. Uh, as the tool that uh, Dr. Harish will share with you uh, how to use it. Uh, many of these steps uh, are actually omitted by the use of such tools and these tools uh, then simplify the process by providing us easy to use interfaces and pre-built components, making it faster and easier to prepare the data. For example, for me, it took me around uh, three or four months to develop all this pipeline. Mm -hmm. But uh, if Dr. Harish teaches you the tool, that then you can quickly do it in, let's say, an afternoon. But of course, that will just be an explore, uh, simple study. For me, I have to, this model have to be 100% accurate so that the city can use it. But uh, just for a basic uh, exploratory phase, uh, the local tools make it very simple, very, very simple. Uh, this uh, illustrates a straightforward workflow. So if you guys are more into using uh, local tools, then this will be the simplified workflow for you. So the input data comes from someone who knows the data source well. For example, for me, it was a hydrologist. Let's say in your specific case study, you might need some, uh, uh, some business specialist in uh, tourism or a business specialist in... Um, let's say uh, clothing industry. So this will be, a, the input data will be designed by a specialist. Then comes the process uh, where a data engineer, you work closely with data engineer who, who, so who tries to understand the results and we process the results and see what meaningful information can be extracted. This as well can be conducted with the help of a specialist. And then final results are uh, reviewed and approved by the peers. So everybody will try to read your results and uh, give you suggestions or feedback. Okay, so now we see the data that I used in uh, detail. So it's kind of a data flow diagram, but uh, I have not used the accurate symbols. So we have three sources of input data, which is rainfall stations, uh, river data and groundwater level. And uh, each of these input teach the model something new which it can now learn and process to give output. 
So let's understand this by a very, very simple example, nothing related to water resource management. So imagine if you are learning to bake a perfect cake. First, you gather all the recipe and ingredients. So that will be input. Uh, this is like collecting your input data. You follow the recipe, which means training several times until you think you have got it right. So you think you that you have a good cake, but then how can you sure, how can you be sure that your uh, cake will be perfect for everyone? If somebody else makes it, will it be perfect? We cannot, we can never know. So that's where validation comes into picture. You ask a few friends to taste your cake and give you feedback. So if it's good, you, you are on the right track. Now you want to be even more certain your cake is consistently delicious. So you get more friends to taste your cake and uh, it's usually made from the same recipe, but you make minor modifications here and there. So some friends might uh, find it too sweet while others might love it. So this is like testing. So you use, your, you use their feedback to adjust your recipe to make it just right for everyone. So, but what if you don't have enough friends to taste uh, test uh, all the time? So this process in machine learning is called cross validation. We divide our uh, uh, hi, input data into- uh, Hi, sorry, sorry? To, uh, sorry to stop you. Uh, bro, we only have 10 minutes remaining in the meeting link. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, so continuing from this example, we divide our input data to training, testing and validation to get more comprehensive uh, analysis without needing a lot of people to repeat. So this cake example also applies to um, ac actual scientific research. So not everyone can reproduce the results that we obtained here in Ancona. So we, we use mathematical mathematics, uh, which helps us be very sure that our results are accurate. So here you can see that we, this was the input groundwater. So you can see over the seasons that there are, there is sometimes more groundwater and there is sometimes less groundwater. And uh, you might already think that uh, when the groundwater is less, it's, it's the case of summers. So this is summers, winters, summers, winters. And over the year, we have this uh, time series. And uh, then we also predict into future. This is called forecasting window. So this is something that we obtained and you, you might already think that, okay, after summers, it has accurately predicted winters and again summers. So, you know, you see that our model is doing a quite a good job and which is also evident by the mathematics. We can see that our model is forecasting a, 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 as closely as possible. So more, this was all about my forecasting research. And now modern water infrastructure like sewer systems and irrigation is a, is a complex network of pipes, machines, and gadgets that help to move water around uh, eff efficiently in the city or in the suburbs. It's what makes sure we, we have a clean uh, water to drink. Uh, every time we take away dirty water and farmers water their crops properly, making our cities and uh, farms work uh, co-work. Co so there are still numerous problems that are either unsolved or unexplored or need people from business to make them commercially solvable. So for this, we now move on to the second part uh, where we will move from the world of technical AI that is engineering side to the business side. Here we will see, uh, we will discuss the business context of these uh, similar problems and additionally discuss uh, homework two uh, and call uh, and some collaboration opportunities with uh, our lab in Ancona. So let's proceed with it. So I'll begin with some case studies um, to help everyone under, uh, see the importance of business in water resource management. So this case study is an interesting is an example of a business initiative, which is specifically for uh, called uh, free water initiative. Uh, this highlights the importance of water sustainability and uh, the ever so important role of business community. So imagine an advertising platform that fulfills your thirst and uh, uh, it fulfills your thirst not only for creativity, but for philanthropy. 
So free water is just that kind of innovation. It turns a uh, premium spring water into canvas for advertising. So it's very innovative, but there's more to this than just refreshment. Uh, 10 cents from each bottle that we, that the company sells is it goes to charitable causes. It's just not about sipping. It's also about making a difference. And speaking of difference, free water is all about sustainability. They source their water from uh, responsible sources and contribute to tackling global water crisis. The 10 cents that were uh, donated to charity uh, after selling each bottle, they are used to build water wells in communities that need more, uh, that, that is in dire need of clean and safe drinking water. So free water's dream is to turn the tide on global water crisis. So they, they very innovatively turned advertising into water uh, sustainability problem. That's so cool. Then there is a, this another case study in which uh, this, this case study is by some other colleagues of our lab. Uh, so that discusses the issue of illegal fishing in Adriatic Sea. So illegal fishing has led to decline in fish populations. The European Union is committed to finding a balance between fishing and preserving the fish population. So they want to maintain this delicate balance. To, to, to solve this problem, uh, colleagues from our lab use a robotic fish. Uh, you can see the fish. This is not an actual fish. This is a robot. So they, they equip this fish with the uh, sensors and GPS to collect real-time data on water flows and uh, manage fish populations. So this data is then utilized to tackle il any illegal fishing activity. Uh, so this problem was financed by a fishing company uh, that wanted to help solve the issue of illegal fishing. So you see business plays an important role in any engineering activity. Uh, with this context uh, in mind, uh, let's move to co-building exercise. Any questions? Oh yeah, could you come closer please, sorry. Yeah, uh, how much of it is already in use? Sorry? How much of this is already in use? Uh, what's the, the timeline of your, of your project? So you are asking me like uh, this model, how much is being really? already used? Yes. yes. Exactly, okay. So for now, this model is in test phase. So which means that uh, we, work closely with the commune of our uh, locality so they help us understand so for now they provide us data and then they give us feedback if uh, this model was uh, any useful to them so for example there was a region in ancona and uh, there they were about to start construction activity so you know construction activities take up a lot of water we are quite uh, unaware of the fact that how much water construction uses, but it's usually the most water intensive activity. And uh, along with that is uh, uh, industrial activities. So these activities take a lot of uh, groundwater level. So the Ancona uh, municipality, they ask us how much water will be used if this much population is increased. So then we add this additional information of population to our model and predict, predict that. And this they later on use and uh, then later on provide us feedback. So over the years, this model will become more and more accurate. And for now, for example, it only forecasts for two to three weeks. So the goal is for three weeks is very less for the government. But when we employ deep learning techniques, they will give us a one year window. So this is the ultimate goal. So for now, this study has been around for one year. And uh, in the coming years, that is my, the journey of my PhD with more reviews by the municipality, it will become much more accurate. And then uh, they will think of adopting it nationwide or something like that. Excellent. So, uh, oh, he thanks you for your answer. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. okay, so so because there's a lack of time, so we just say thank you to him and I'll introduce you to some exercises that you can use as follow up, right? And I'll also give his contact information so if you guys have any questions, you can ask them. And again, I'm sorry, the online people cannot ask questions because, you know, I turn on the video like 30 minutes earlier, right? I didn't know it's like 60 minutes restricted, right? Uh, so again, I will share the contact information and I'll upload this video to our school website, right? So you can Perfect. see some students contact you. We can see how to do this.